Hello, it's Jason Kendall, and welcome to another one of my introductory astronomy lectures. Today we're going to be talking about the tides. The tides. The tides, they come in, they go out, and yes, we do know why. So the tides go in and out because of gravity, or more specifically, the difference in gravity between two locations. See, when you fall in a gravitational field, that's actually kind of the explanation for the tides. You don't need to have the rotation or a center of mass or anything like that. That actually helps other things. But when you fall in a gravitational field, it depends on from where you're falling and with reference to other things. So we have a solid body known as the Earth or a semi-solid body or solid body, and then it's covered by water. The water gets affected differently than the, than the solid object of the Earth. But the key idea is that when you fall in a gravitational field, you don't feel your weight. And part of that is the actual, that, that subtle statement is the basis for understanding the tides. So what are, what's gravity again? Well, it's the force between two masses at a distance. So you take two little masses, whatever size they are, and you know, take their, and they have to be made of something, so these masses must be made of something, and what have they got to be made of? They've got to be made of matter, and matter has mass, and mass gravitates other mass. So whatever the distance is between them, take the two masses, multiply them together, divide by the inverse of the distance squared, multiply by gravitational constant, which is discovered by other means, and that gives you the force due to gravity. Now, the force due to gravity from one mass and another mass is the trick. And tides are the difference between masses. All right, so when two things pull on each other, when they pull on each other, um, we always think of like the center of mass of two things. When we say, oh, how big is this thing? The idealization of Newton's, sec of Newton's law of gravitation is that it's two point masses. Not two distributed masses, but two point masses. So what we can do is we can think of when we think of the moon and the earth, we think of the mass being centered at the center of the earth and the mass being centered at the center of the moon. And it's those two centers that are attracting each other, not anything else. So, but really what we care about for the tides are say all the elements of the planet, not just the center, but the difference between the elements and the center. So that's going to be kind of obvious in a little bit. So let's actually just show the effect of the moon on all the elements of the Earth. So first and foremost, let's break it up and keep it really simple and just break it to a bunch, a series of objects on the surface. Then what we do is we say, fine, the magnitude of the force on these locations on Earth uh, is represented, say, by these yellow arrows. But the red arrow is the center of mass. So all of them combined together. All the masses combined together must somehow equal that red mass, that red line. But let's see how that works. So the, uh, the center, the, each element is being attracted, each little element of the Earth is being attracted towards the moon according to the yellow arrows. And oh, that's all we really care about. So we'll call them test arrows because they're taking just like, you know, maybe a car on the surface of the Earth, a building, a, a mountain, a lake, um, a tiny pebble any of those things. And so they're all being attracted by the moon. And the only thing that we have to worry about is the acceleration that is experienced by that element on the earth due to the moon. And that's what those yellow arrows are. So now what we can do is we can say, fine, let's get to the system where, let's change coordinates. We're gonna change coordinates to the center of mass of Earth. Because we don't feel ourselves being pulled towards the moon, we feel ourselves being pulled towards the Earth. So we need to reference the Earth's pull. So we're gonna remove all of the elements, uh, the, the constant element, the center of mass being pulled towards the, towards the moon due to the Earth. So the Earth, all of the sum of everything of the Earth is the red. So we're gonna reduce all of the little tiny things by the big red arrow. And so when we do that, we find that there's a difference. The difference between the red arrow, which is the center of mass pull towards the moon, and the yellow arrow, which is the little tiny, the center of mass of the Earth is red, and the yellow arrows are all the tiny little pieces on the surface of the Earth and their acceleration. So the two different accelerations. So if you look, you see a blue arrow shows the difference between the two accelerations. All right, so now let's actually ignore the Earth's falling towards the moon. So if we ignore the Earth's falling towards the moon, we erase the red arrows and we're left with the blue arrows only. 
See what I mean? So then look at what we're left with. We're left with only the differences. And if we do that, uh, we just simply focus on them. We see that the differences pull in at the poles and at the towards on the, on the side of the Earth towards the moon, it's going towards the moon. But on the side away from the moon, it's actually the difference of acceleration at that element is outward away from the moon. Now, this is interesting because this is actually what we see if we, now let's, if we go over the entire surface of the Earth, we see all these little elements all combined together. So the acceleration, the difference in acceleration due to the moon, um, so with the, Earth, with the Earth's acceleration towards the moon subtracted out, which is what we don't feel. We don't feel ourselves accelerated towards the moon. So we take away the, the entire Earth's contribution falling towards the moon away, and we're left with the difference between the, basically the moon's pull and the Earth's pull. So the difference between the moon's pull on the total Earth and our pull at this, at this one little location due to the moon. And what we're left with is the series of arrows that kind of spring out. Notice that uh, the series of arrows springs out on the side facing the moon and the, facing the moon and the side facing away from the moon. These are accelerations that are experienced at these locations. These are forces, force per unit mass at each location. And you can see that's the tides. The tides mean there's two bulges. One bulge is towards the moon and one bulge is away from the moon and it's actually compressing at the top. So the tidal is stretching. The difference, in excel, the difference in force experienced by the little places on the Earth due to the moon, uh, due to the difference in gravity at the surface of the moon, at the surface of the Earth due to the moon. So now, as the, as the Earth rotates, it drags that lump forward. So literally, the, mood, the, the, uh, the force due to gravity, the difference in forces due to gravity on the side facing the moon Lifts the, uh, lifts the ocean higher and attracts it away from the poles, or at least 90 degrees away. And then on the other side of the Earth, it pulls it away from the Earth, and, and it basically has two tidal bulges. So there's a tide on one side of the Earth and a tide on the other side of the Earth, one side facing the moon and one side away from the moon. Now, the Earth's rotation causes friction on these tidal bulges, which is the oceans, and it drags them forward because the Earth's rotating fast compared to the moons going around the Earth. So as the Earth rotates, it drags the tides ahead of it, which means that the tidal bulge is ahead of the moon in its orbit. So, so you can see that as there we go, we see the tides moving ahead. But if the, since that's friction, that means there's a force that's trying to pull it back. And after an extraordinary period of time, eventually the tidal bulge of the Earth will line up with the direction towards the moon. That will take billions of years, and that will be a long time after humans are gone. But in this time, the event this, the moon will only be visible on one side of the Earth. Because as the Earth's rotation slows down, the, the month also slows down, but the rotation of the Earth slows down until it matches the month. So, in a very distant future, the day will equal the month, and the moon will only be visible on one side of the Earth. Now, this is exactly the same thing that has already happened to the moon. If we look at the moon, we only see one side of the moon. The moon's day is equal to the month. It rotates once on its axis for every time it goes around the Earth. So there, that means that, that because, and this has happened so quickly, because the moon is much smaller than the Earth. So, as since it's much smaller, the, the tidal friction that occurred on the moon happened a lot longer ago, and it is now tidally locked. It will take much longer for the Earth to become tidally locked to the moon, because the moon's, gravita the moon's mass is much less than the Earth's, so therefore the differential effects are smaller. So there we have it. There, this is the reason for the tides. The reason for the tides are because of the difference in, due to, difference in gravitational acceleration on all parts of the Earth compared to the acceleration due to all of the Earth towards the moon. So difference in the little one little place on the Earth compared to the center of mass of the Earth. And those two, that difference is the tides. So there we have it. In a long time from the future, there will be the month will equal the day. <laughs> we'll see you next time. See you soon.